tonight. I thank you guys for letting me come tonight to talk to you a little bit about, um, you know, how to make your holiday feast kind of uh, more cancer healthy. And if you notice, when you look at this table, one of the things that we're striving for is color. Foods that fight cancer are usually very colorful. So we have cranberries, we got blueberries, we have strawberries, we have blue corn tortilla chips. You know, things with color are going to be, um, in general, more cancer healthy. I've given you um, a handout that has some suggestions on it, which I'm just going to talk about just a little bit. Cranberries really are like a powerhouse of um, flavonoids, which is a phytonutrient that has antioxidant properties and anti-cancer properties. Now, you know, obviously the more um, we eat things in their natural state, um, the better. You know, we've used craisins, which do have a fair amount of sugar in them, but you know, it's better to have them that way than not have them at all. So some people, as you say, you know, are not cranberry fans. But you know, cranberry relish, like at Thanksgiving, if you take a bag of cranberries and you throw a couple of oranges in it and put it in your food processor, rind and all, grind it up, you know, put just enough sugar in it to sweeten it to taste. That is going to be much healthier for you than cranberry sauce that's just dripping in sugar. Um, so that's an easy little switch to make it a little bit healthier. Um, sweet potatoes. You know, we eat a lot of uh, Idaho potatoes. Not that I expect that you're going to give those up, but if we can replace it with a colorful sweet potato, that has a lot more nutritional value. Do you guys, guys new Val scores potatoes and sweet potatoes? I don't know what those scores are, but I'll guarantee you if you go look, the sweet potato is going to be a higher score. And again, it's color. You know, the thing, same thing with your squashes, your butternut squash, your acorn squash, all those bright orange yellow colors are going to be much healthier for you. And, and the holidays, Thanksgiving is a perfect time to add all those things. So, you know, at my house, instead of the sweet potato casserole that's, you know, all beat up with the mixer and totally covered with brown sugar and, and stuff, I'm going to cut up sweet potatoes and butternut squash and acorn squash, and I'm going to bake them, probably throw some cranberries and walnuts on it. And then, you know, a little maple syrup, a little butter on top. Um, it's going to be a lot healthier. Thank you. Maple syrup? Maple syrup, you know, it's still sugar, but you know, we usually, the amount of sugar in sweet potato casserole um, can be um, pretty profound. Y'all feel free to throw in your tidbits if you, you know, want to share. Um, cruciferous vegetables are huge cancer fighters. I'm talking about broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, um, cabbage. Any of those foods um, are going to be great cancer fighters. Um, so are like mustard greens, kohlrabi, um, things like that. So, kohlrabi. Now my husband personally, he eats those raw. I have to go to the farmer's market and get them and just peel them and uh, cut them up. Isn't it kind of turnip-like kohlrabi? Um, Broccoli Robbie. Yeah. yeah, any of those, any of those are great. <laughs> citrus fruit, you know, we are entering citrus se uh, season. Tangerines, oranges, grapefruit, those beautiful fruit salads that, that people make, perfect, perfect. They have lots of fiber, they have lots of vitamin C, they have folate. So I would, you know, encourage you to add you know, that great big fruit salad. You can put coconut in it. You can put red cherries in it. You know, you don't have to have every single thing in it. It's perfectly healthy. Um, I know that, that we're, you know, if we try to go from, you know, our total fast food diet to perfectly <laughs> cancer healthy, we will fail. So, you know, we just want to try to make little changes to help us get there. Pomegranates. How many of you guys have ever eaten a pomegranate? Believe it or not, my small children even love pomegranates. They are quite tasty as long as you don't have diverticulitis because they're all seed. Um, that's the whole, the whole fruit. 
and they are a little bit of a pain to um, seed, but if you put them down in water, you know, crack it in half, um, it's a lot easier. The seeds will sink to the bottom and all the other stuff that you need to get rid of will go to the top. But it is, that would be a great thing to put on your salad um, once they get into season. They're not quite there yet, but by the holidays, we they, do, do we? We do have them now. They, they are, they really are very tasty. And if you've noticed, you ever seen those bottles that, um, they're like two little balls together called palm juice? That's pomegranate juice. And it actually comes blueberry flavored, cherry flavored. And a lot of people aren't real keen on it because it is kind of a little bit tart. But what I do, you know, I'm really not a fan of artificial sweetener. I'm not a, a fan of um, soft drinks. And, but if you take your bottle of water and you take a sip out of it, then you got a little space at the top. You can put maybe just half an ounce of blueberry pomegranate water in it. Then you've got a great flavored water that's flavored naturally, not with a bunch of artificial stuff. And it has a lot of antioxidants in it. And it tastes great. How much is it a bottle? Palm, palm how much does it cost? How much is it? Three something a bottle. But if you're just pouring, you know, a half ounce at a time into your bottle of water, you're getting some vitamins, you're getting some nutrients, and it's natural. And, uh, you know, I think we all know that sodas are not good for any of us. There's really nothing good in any way, shape, or form in soda. And I really don't think there's anything good in diet soda either. And, I mean, I love Coca-Cola better than anything in life. However, I did ditch them about eight years ago. And um, I'm a water drinker. But I like putting palm, palm in it. That is a good way to flavor it. Um, well, it depends on how long it's going to take you. Oh, you mean, yes, refrigerate the palm. Yes, yes. And I think it comes refrigerated already here. So, um, yeah, I would keep it refrigerated. Nuts. You know, there are some nuts that are more uh, cancer healthy than others. Um, almonds are one of them. Now, um, walnuts are another one that are um, really good. Of course, you know, you have to, to watch. Some nuts have, like macadamia nuts, probably don't have the best um, healthy fat profile. But almonds and walnuts and even pecans are um, all good choices. Now, you know, if you buy them smothered in salt, you may be negating a little bit of their um, health benefit. So, you know, you can buy raw nuts that are not um, covered in, in salt or uh, anything else. And that would be the way we would encourage you um, to eat them. Garlic is always good. And um, we've put garlic in our um, artichoke dip. You know, th the main thing is we want to choose a variety and we want to choose um, healthy fruits and vegetables. You know, the, the most healthy diet um, as far as cancer prevention, is going to have more fruits and vegetables and less meat. And red meat is one of the things that they have come um, and, you know, ask us to cut down on the amount of red meat we eat. You know, two or three times a week to eat red meat, where most of us eat it probably eight or ten times a week. A lot of uh, Americans, like in general, Not you know. The American Institute of Cancer Research, the American Cancer Society, and you know it isn't um, a lot of times necessarily the red meat per se. It's that a lot of carcinogens are fat soluble, and so the best steak is well marbled. And you know I don't know about you when I think about a cow and what they eat. You know we have cows they're like hanging out on the hill around here eating grass, but most of the meat that we get comes from cattle that's been fed out west on um, feedlots where the stuff they put in the feed, you know, there's a hundred cows on a lot, there's a, they're all in close proximity. It's not like it is around here. So if you can buy local beef, you know, um, or local meat, you're safer. You know, if you can buy, um, Food City now has 
chicken that's antibiotic free and hormone free. Is that correct, Nicole? So, you know, we're, we're looking for antibiotic free, hormone free um, meat products. We want to stay away from processed foods. Uh, my favorite book um, on what we should eat is called Food Rules by Michael Poulon. And the, the first rule is eat real food. The second rule is if it came through the window of your car, it is not real food. Um, one of the rules says you should not eat anything that has ingredients that the average third grader cannot pronounce. You should not eat food that um, has ingredients that your grandmother would not recognize as real food. Your grandmother probably never saw a cheese puff. Um, you know that rule, if it tastes good, you should spit it out. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, you know, basically, we just want to get back to whole, real food. You know, this, this same book says you can eat all the cookies you want as long as you make them from scratch. Now, how often is that going to happen at your house? Never. Not happening very often at my house, so that means I won't be eating cookies every single day. Um, you can have a homemade cake as long as you make it yourself. You know, there's another rule that says um, the longer the shelf life, the shorter your life. If it has tons of preservatives in it and it can last through a nuclear holocaust, it probably is not good for you. If it's going to rot by next week, it probably is really good for you. Um, there's a rule that says when you want to shop the supermarket, you want to shop the periphery. That's where the fresh things are. In the center is where all the heavily processed foods are. Um, those are the things that we really want to try to um, get away from. So we've tried to give you a few healthier choices. You know, we've made some switches. I know people are going to have dip during the holidays. Sour cream is a container of fat. That is totally non-fat, zero fat Greek yogurt. It's like a little can of protein. It's got twice as much protein as regular yogurt. So, you know, not that the, the chips we're sticking in it are still probably have fat in them, but, you know, at least we've made that snack much healthier. And you can make it into any kind of dip that you want, any kind of creamy dip. Um, I do it all the time. Nobody even knows. I don't tell them. Um, we've picked dark blue corn tortilla chips. They're colorful, so they're going to have things in them that are better for us than regular chips. What makes them blue? I guess it's the blue corn. That's what it says. Now we have those sweet potato chips, and we have, um, uh, there were some other chips in that Terra bag. I didn't read all the different kinds. Aha. Uh -huh. Yep, the real, the real cranberries are over here in the vegetable, in the fruits and vegetable department. See, what have we got in here? Exotic vegetable chips. Um, sweet potato, terra, bataka, yucca, and parsnips, root vegetables. They're actually pretty good. Did y'all try them? Is that on the chip aisle? Yeah, Which yeah. One? The terra? Terra. No, Oh, the organic aisle. The angel food cake, of course, has got much less fat and sugar than regular cake. So that's a better choice. Our blueberries and strawberries are flat up, you know, probably the best choice up there. And you can put them on, um, but you can put them in anything. You could make a sweet dip with your yogurt um, with blueberries and strawberries. So, and anyway, I guess the, you know, the take home message is we know we're not going to be perfect during the holidays, but small things make a difference over the long haul. So if there's small changes that we can make um, over time, if you keep doing that same small change in a lifetime, it makes a big difference. So these are just, you know, some little ideas of how you can, can get started. And uh, you all have other ideas you want to share. 
that dip is great on a baked potato. Which one? Greek yogurt. And I mean, if you, if you like sour cream on your baked potato, you can just put straight up Greek yogurt. And it does come, you know, it's like milk. You can get non-fat 2% or 4%. So if you want a little bit of fat in your Greek yogurt, you can buy it that way. And they also um, just sell flavored cartons of Greek yogurt like you would buy any kind. And there's like pomegranate yogurt, pineapple, Blueberry, strawberry, apple cinnamon, um, mango, peach. That's what I have for breakfast every day is um, Greek yogurt. Has 15 grams of protein in a little tiny carton. So it holds you better, you know, through the morning. A regular carton of yogurt has maybe six or seven grams of protein in it. So it's... Um, How many carbs are in it? It depends on which brand you pick, maybe 24, 26 grams of carbs because they're not artificially sweetened. So it's, reg it's regular, but... What's the iron in it? No, I don't know the answer to that. This is like I'm as smart as a fifth grader. <laughs> I wouldn't guess it would be very high. I don't think many dairy products are very high in iron. You have to have it with your spinach salad, I guess. All right. Well, y'all come get seconds and have some more to eat. Thank you.